a judge, Judge Judy. Here in our courtroom, we see lots of different cases. And the way it works is when someone is suspected of breaking the law, they are arrested and then brought into my courtroom. Here, there's one lawyer that's trying to tell the side of the story of the person who was arrested. And then there's another lawyer who is trying to prove that they are guilty. After they make their cases, a group of regular people called the jury, they decide if the person is guilty or not. If they're found to be guilty, then I'm the one that determines how justice is served. Sometimes that means that they have to pay a fine or maybe serve the community. And sometimes they have to serve some jail time. But no matter what the court case looks like or how it ends up, there are some things that are always the same. For instance, I am always in charge in my courtroom. If someone gets out of hand, I can tell them to settle down. If they don't settle down, I can have them removed from the courtroom. But along with that authority comes a lot of responsibility. For instance, I have to listen as everyone is speaking to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. I also have to make sure that the suspect has a fair trial. You know, all of this makes me think of a Bible story where Jesus was welcomed as king. To help us think about the story, it's important to ask the right question. The question I want you to think about over the next few weeks is what did Jesus do to save us? Now, you already may know the answer, but over the next few weeks, listen as you learn more about the answer. It was time to celebrate Passover, a special time to remember how God had freed his people from slavery in Egypt. Many Israelites had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate God's amazing rescue. Jesus and his disciples were among the people who traveled to Jerusalem. When they neared Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead into a village. As soon as you enter the village, Jesus told them, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on it. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. The disciples did as Jesus asked. As they untied the donkey, its owners asked why. The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their robes onto the donkey and helped Jesus get onto it. People spread their robes along the road for Jesus, and others spread palm branches cut from the fields. The whole crowd praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Hosanna, they said. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The word Hosanna means save now. The people welcomed Jesus as their promised king. They hoped he would save them from the Romans. Some religious leaders asked Jesus to tell his disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, if they did not praise me, the rocks would praise me. While Jesus was in the temple complex, people who were blind and people who were lame came to him. Jesus healed them. The blind and lame would not have been allowed to worship in the temple. Other religious leaders saw Jesus' miracle and heard the children saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were very angry and asked Jesus, Do you hear what these children are saying? They were saying Jesus is the king. Yes, Jesus told them. The writer of the Psalms had said, You have prepared praise from the mouths of children and nursing infants. Jesus left them and went to the town of Bethany to spend the night. During Jesus' triumphal entry, the people welcomed him as king. Jesus was the Messiah spoken about by the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. One day, Jesus will return to earth on a white horse as king over everything. <laughs>